And I'm super happy because of this business. I'm able to take care of her every single week. She lives with me. Uh, I hire a helper and all of that because of this business, guys. So picture a day when I took her to her favorite, you know, beautiful vacation overlooking the water, the beach resort, right? We have an amazing time with her, with my dad. Um, so picture that day in your mind right now. Close your eyes, you know, you can. And picture that day for you. Who's this? Oh, you're an entrepreneur? Oh, you're a real estate investor. Oh, you're trying to learn from those who did it. Well, come into the lab then. Put your white coat on, gloves on, notepad, and let's build y'all. Real estate experiment. What is happening, y'all? You guys know I always bring to you true practitioners in the flesh doing their thing. And where do I meet practitioners? Uh, at places where we uh, invest into masterminds, invest in being with like-minded individuals. And this gentleman caught my attention. We were talking about this offline because of his charisma, his branding. And I'm like, this is crazy. I've been, you know, doubling down. You guys know we've had multiple uh, STR operators, MTR. And my goal, anytime I meet someone or I'm like, mm, you're doing some, and I like what you're doing and you're scaling, you're growing, and it's bigger than you, I'm like, I got to have this person on my platform, share the insights with the community. So I did just that. So I met with this gentleman in person, in flesh, when I was in San Diego. You guys know, shout out to Jesse Vasquez, putting a wonderful event together. Very happy to be out there with my partners. Shout out to Rachel Gainsborough as well, another doctor. And so funny, the first thing I told this gentleman when I met him was like, you got to meet my partner. She's also a pharmacist. And you know what's crazy? The crazy thing is my father-in-law is also a pharmacist. So anytime I make a connection with pharmacists, I'm like, I have like this mutual connection and understanding because, you know, it's a different cloth. It's a different breed. And there's this different. Uh, and it's it's interesting to see a lot of people who are doing well, quote unquote, or relatively well in that world. Right. Because, again, it's a very respectable process to to become a pharmacist and then get to wear the lab, lab coat that I talk about here in the lab and then serve, but then find a model in real estate that serves them even further and allows them to operate in their zone of genius. And when I saw this gentleman, I'm like, this man is operating his zone of genius. The energy was there. He was had an impact. It was this aura that I felt. I'm truly, I'm not, I'm not blowing smoke up your ass. I'm, I'm telling you what I saw. And then I'm like, okay, let me connect with this guy. And I'm like, how do I not know this guy? He's killing it. He's in our space. He's coming into MTR. So therefore, experimentation. I want to welcome Dr. Chow B and B here in the lab with us. You can see here if you're watching, the he doesn't, you know, he 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 surrounds himself with 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 greatness. And that's that's my goal is to bring you closer to greatness in here in the lab so you can hear it from the horse's mouth. So Dr. Chow, what's happening, baby? How you doing, brother? Hey, hey, brother. How are you guys doing? Hey, everybody. Hey, I'm we're we're good. We're good. Yeah, very grateful to be here. You got an amazing leader, Ruben. I can feel his energy as well. I know he's a tremendous leader and he's doing great things. So you guys are following the man for sure. I appreciate that, man. Thank you for the shout out. And uh, you guys will excuse me when I go mute because I'm doing this. I got a little cold, but I'm still I'm like, I am not canceling this. This has to happen today. So if I go off mute, you guys hear a little cough, but you don't catch it. The editing, by the time you listen to this, it'll be cut. So anyways, it'll be all good in there. But with that said, uh, listen, Dr. Chow, I got to ask you, we obviously know the name. I can tell, you know, it's in your title. So people think of Dr. Chow, but then I look at you for those of us who are listening. And I'm like, you got the branding draped out. You got the fresh vest. You got the captain hat. But behind all that, there's a whole process that had to happen. You had to get here somewhere. So why don't you give a just a high, quick level set of like, how did you get in the position that you're in today, surrounded with your people you're surrounded by, the impact that you're having in your community? How did that start for you, Dr. Chow, and when exactly? Yeah, I appreciate it. So I came here as an immigrant from Vietnam uh, with absolutely nothing. My mom, my dad, and my sister and I, we had to sleep on literally one mattress in one tiny room in the worst neighborhood possible. And I would hear gunshots as I go to school. So my mom and dad had to do everything, manual labor, to just put food on the table. We didn't know any English. We didn't know anybody except my uncle. And uh, it was a really tough, tough, tough time. So we thought the way was to go to school, 
become a doctor, lawyer, right? We how we've been taught that and become somebody to get the American dream. Well, I promise myself when I see my mom cry, happy Mother's Day, by the way, this weekend. But when I see my mom cry each and every night, is she's just, you know, sacrificing everything to help me go to school that I promise I would do whatever it takes to help her retire her, retire my dad, buy them a dream home, and uh, they don't have to worry about anything ever again. So I thought the way to do that was becoming a doctor. So then I went to school, become a pharmacist. After eight years of grueling pharmacy medical school, it was one of the toughest things I've ever done, if not the toughest, even tougher than making millions of dollars from uh, business. Um, I also got my MBA as well during the summertime. So I graduated, I got a white coat, I got an MBA, I got everything. And I thought I made it, right? Within my first year, I worked my butt off. I, I won the award of the number one pharmacy in the district for a Fortune 10 company. And I was like, mom, I'm going to take care of you from now on. Don't, don't have to worry about nothing, right? I'm making six big income, blah, blah, blah. Next thing I know, they just give me more work, the same amount of pay, and less help. Like they cut my tech hours like by half because they know that I can handle it, right? So I was like, this is BS, man. <laughs> so I climbed the ladder of success all the way to the top just to realize that I'd lean against the wrong wall. How many in here has that experience before, right? So I was like, what do I do? On top of everything, my mom was diagnosed with cancer at the time. So I was like, crap, I got to figure out this thing out fast. I don't know how much time she got, right? Um, so I try all kinds of businesses from online, offline, to Amazon, to eBay, to open my own restaurant, to do MLM, contacting people, stalking people. I did everything. What 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 did yeah. that? I, mean, I got to ask you because when I hear that, I hear I hear like you know someone who's seeking for more, and and some of the listeners could be in the exact same phase depending on when they are in their journey. And and the reason I want to stop you is because I I I want to take you a step back as to when you're in that phase of okay, I need a change. What in retrospect? What when you think about what you're thinking? Are you just thinking of how can I make more money? How can I spend less of my time into something like what's the mind mindset that you're going into when you're looking at these new opportunities and, and what is driving that? Or, and again, maybe you can give, give us some hindsight as to how you were looking at them incorrectly. So just put it, put a, putting a bow on it collectively. Sure. Sure. So my mindset was just, how do I get free? <laughs> I felt, I felt like I was like a corporate slave, you know, I felt like I, I was trapped with a golden handcuff and uh, frustrated, burnt out. So how do I get that financial freedom? where it's, it's, I, I'm getting like passive income where I don't have to work. I don't have to have a boss. I do whatever I want to do. Take care of my mom three, four times uh, a week, right? Because I, I couldn't do that when I had a job uh, and she needed to go to a lot of treatments. Um, so it's just basically it's just how do I get absolute financial freedom? Hmm. So which which avenue, did you gain traction in any other avenues? Because I know you're not, you know, uh, yeah, I'd like to hear that. Sure, sure. So, I mean, I, I get some traction here and there, but it's not it's not enough for me to get absolute financial freedom, right? So, did you uh, have a number in mind? And uh, did you have a number in mind when you say yeah, that? Like, yeah, ten k a month back then. You know, this like years ago. But yeah, ten k a month would replace my income uh, as a pharmacist, and then I can actually retire from that. Of course, like more will, will, will be better, but at least 10K a month, yeah. And so the idea is get 10K a month once you achieve that. So so tell us, because I'm sure it didn't just happen, right? Like you landed 10K because it's, it's, sometimes it's good to appreciate the process. So how, you know, was there another opportunity that got you the 10K a month or was it, you know, which 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 opportunity got you there? And like, how did you stumble upon this I always like to ask that like, because I always sure, when I think sure. of this space. It's like, who gave you that seed? Who planted that seed? Or right. how did you stumble upon it? Right, right. So, so, so guys, I mean, I, I try like, you know, eBay, Amazon, drop shipping, all of that. Uh, that just took so much work that I did not have, right? Because I was working full time, sometimes overtime, driving an hour to work an hour home. So, and then I also try like multifamily, investing multifamily or storage units, or all of that. But what I found out after I paid, you know, like freaking at least like 50K in, in mentorship, 
is that you need a lot of money for those things, or you need a lot of time to find a deal, right? Which I did not have a lot of money or a lot of time. So I was like, what is that one business that does not require a lot of money and does not require a lot of time, you know? So what I found is I could leverage somebody else's property I don't have to own and sublet it and make money from it. That's the business where it does not require a lot of money at all and it does not require a lot of time because once you sublet it, then it's pretty much like cash flow, you know? Um, so that's so that's how my journey to got me the epiphany. Uh, yeah. how, how, who planted that seed? Do you remember who it was, or where, where, where you? Yeah, yeah, that? I do. So, so I went to uh, seminars. It was a multi-family seminars. <laughs> I met somebody there that do short-term rental, and uh, come talked about it. And she was like, "You, uh, I mean, does Airbnb own any properties? No." And are they the biggest company in the world? Yeah. So do do we need to own any properties? Mm. No. We just need to control the property. You don't need mm. to own anything. You just need to control everything, right? So I was like, that just blew my mind. That's like, whoa, I didn't even think about that. And I got all these degrees at our wazoo, whatever. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, man, I mean, it's just like, you know, definitely shifted. And then, so from that, that, that point on, I did it. I, I did one by one and I did all the wrong thing, like put it under my name and r- didn't even tell the, the the apartment complex I did it, <laughs> you know, all the crazy stuff. I had shut down like, a bunch of them. Uh, but but after like after a year, I was really get traction and really figured it out. So I scaled to like 20, 23 Airbnb, something uh, around there and got my financial freedom. And I've looked back, it's been four or five, actually five years now. And, uh, you know, life has been amazing the last five years. Absolutely amazing. Yeah. That's amazing, man. I want to get to that in a second, but like let's let's talk about that first one. So you, you you get that seed and now you get your first one. What does that look like? What are the mistakes that you want to highlight that you did even the first, yeah. second, or third ones that you know that that this audience could avoid uh, just by hearing yeah. it from you? Yeah, absolutely. First of all, don't do anything by yourself. <laughs> you want to have a mentor, you want to have a team behind you, right? Uh, I started this like eight, nine years ago. So there wasn't a lot of anybody. Everybody's just trying to the blind lead, leading the, the blind, right? So I was trying to figure out my own. Um, so, you know, don't do it under your own name either. You got to have an LLC. Um, and of course, be upfront with the landlord. Tell them what you are doing, <laughs> okay? <laughs> so so, so that way it, uh, the business will have, um, you know, will actually stay around. And uh, why, why do you them. why do you say that though? I just for someone who's like, well, you know, what I know, I, I, I'm kind of an action taker. I want speed. Is there more stories behind that? How that could backfire, or is it just kind of like setting up your structure the right way? Like, do you have some 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 stories around that, or is it more just as uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I mean, I said under my own name, so you know, there's there's really no protection. As far as the with the you know business, you have more of a, a, a protection, and uh, you know, and then if the apartment company found out, then you know I, I'll be in trouble. It's under my name, right? So I, I'm not supposed to have other people in there. Um, so you know that, that kind of you know I I trust me, I want to do things fast. That's why I did it that way, right? I love mm-hmm. mistakes, but it doesn't take much long to set up an LLC. And once you have the right pitch, which I can go over that with you guys to show you guys the right pitch. So that way it's like, boom, you're in, you know, and it's, it's super easy. Yeah. Yeah. Tell, tell, tell us about what you see has drastically changed in what I would call the, the rental arbitrage uh, yes. space. Right. And uh, maybe it's, it's small things, but maybe it's big things. Have you seen a shift since you were early on in the phase? Oh, absolutely. There's so much regulation, so much super saturated with a short term space. That's why about four or five years ago, I um, I shifted more to the midterm space, like corporate housing. I was actually one of the one who pioneered like teaching this uh, a few years back, and, uh, and and a lot of people know about it, right? So I was like, why don't we just do more of this instead of hosting a bunch of vacation rental uh, that you know trash the place, party, throw events, you know, and and there's too much work, too much headaches, or just a few nights stay. Right? It's not worth it. I rather host a company. That's why my main thing is corporate housing. Mm. Uh, 
most of my clients are companies like construction, IT, insurance housing. Super powerful. I love them. Uh, and, and they stay for months. They pay well. There's no evictions for the past eight years I've been doing this. Crazy. There's a ton of evictions for the vacation rental space. You know, so I was like, it's just so much better. And I actually got absolute financial freedom because of the corporate housing midterm space. Yeah. So that's that's interesting. That's a great segue, actually, because, you know, when we talk about uh, what you're talking about is, you know, corp- corporate housing. So you're having corporate leases. Uh, but there's two. It sounds like there's two sides of, of, of the coin here. One is um, you have to have the corporate LLC relationship with the building to be able to get control of these units. And now you also have to foster the relationships with it construction etc so yes when you get to 23 which one comes first do you build out the relationship first and then find the inventory like how how are you operating with them it's kind of like hey uh dr chow you got anything for um you know five we need to five employees we got to relocate or was it hey let me secure this place first and then go hunting. Which one comes first? I'm sure that could, right. be, that could paralyze somebody and be like, well, I, which one do I do first? And which do I do both? How does that look? Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, for, for me in the beginning, I was just trial and error figuring it out. So I, I secured a property first and then I trying to get a client, right? But now I have all the, the clients, all the sources. So somebody that, uh, you know, get into my circle or into my, uh, you know, mastermind mentorship, I just give all my sources to them. So it's, it's a shortcut. And I even guarantee that if they don't get bookings after 30 days and they're a good student, uh, you know, I will actually pay them that first month rent so they can just get out of that lease. And, you know, it's a no brainer. So yeah. that's, that's like, no, nobody else is doing that. Um, but yeah, I mean, so why not have both, right? If you can tap into a mentorship or a mastermind that has both um, the sources, right? And the know-how on how you can get the property, then you just grow one by one, you know? So for example, if 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 you grow one by one, you, you have four occupancy or 80, 90% occupancy, it's okay to grow another one, two more, three more, whatever, right? And then while you're growing and if it's full occupancy and you come across a client that need it then just go out there and grab another property that's the beautiful thing about this business very flexible Mm -hmm. um and it's very super low risk as well because the worst thing can happen is just it doesn't work you just lose the first month rent first month deposit you still keep the furniture you find another property you know so it's super powerful let's talk about the type of properties because I double double down into the insurance niche, and what I'm finding yeah. is um, our sweet spot. You know, we were both at um, the MTR, yeah. and I love data. And we had uh, Brian there, the CEO of Furnish Finder, you know, kind of show us some data that they had aggregated. And, you know, there was a – I, I kind of like the, the – well, for lack of a better word, um, barrier of entry. And I saw that there was – if you remember that graph, there was a four-bedroom homes. They didn't have me on Furnish Finder. And which meant that there's not that much supply. And that's that's particularly what we focus on. But it's a very different avatar, right? It's a, it's insurance. And so they they need, you know, a lot of four bedroom homes. You know, they need a yard. They have a dog, et cetera. <clears throat> For you, your type of properties, when yes. you say locked down a property, is it similar? Is it different? Do you have like a two bedrooms? You have a couple yeah. ones? You have threes? Like yeah. what is your portfolio very, kind of it, look like yeah it's very similar actually so my sweet spots is four bedroom two and a half bath mm. and i found out that to be true like i, I have students across the, the the u.s right hundreds of students um so so we, we we look at all the markets every day um yeah four bedroom and two and a half bath now if you are in a more tighter market like new york dc san diego whatever you can get away with three bedroom two bath uh, with a backyard or even a two bedroom, two bath, right? It just depends on where you are. Um, but yeah, you're absolutely right. So the insurance space, they definitely more family oriented. So they do want a backyard. They do want to have pets friendly. Mm-hmm. Um, they do want more space. So yes. Mm-hmm. So uh, and and because when it comes to corporate, um, these corporate leases. Are you uh, getting these in more buildings or are you getting these in more single family homes? Uh, I like single family homes. Okay. Um, because it's is, you know, 
it's just easier, less. I mean, what I mean by that is, as you know, these apartments building, you got so many people around you that there might be neighbors complaining or whatever, which sometimes you don't, which is great. Um, however, I believe with the four bedroom, three, three bedroom, single family suburb, a lot of people will like that, especially insurance, which is one of, one of my favorite, probably my favorite yeah. uh, go to host. Um, and also, you know, construction companies and stuff like that as well. So, you know, not, there's nothing wrong with going apartments as well, two bedroom uh, apartment, three bedroom apartment. Uh, you, you get economy of scale. You, you can scale that to as many units as you want as well. So, you know, it, either way is good. Yeah. Yeah. And the reason I asked, cause I know we had like, uh, and you, you know, him noble, he was, he came on our, uh, yeah. he was on our platform. He, he specializes in like government contracts and stuff like that. And he'll go for more buildings, even uh, Rafa, uh, we got a chance to connect in a mastermind when we were in, in San Diego. And, you know, he was more like, hey, let me grab five of these, right? Let me go. And so I'm just thinking um, f- my model is completely different. Like I, I, we actually buy ours too and we we manage as well some others. So um, I was just wondering, like even out of that 20 something portfolio that you have, is it, would you say it's mainly for three single family homes or would you say it's more, uh, you do have a couple of buildings? Because I just want to give the, the audience some context. It's like when they're looking for, thinking about the avatar which we'll get to in a second but like for your portfolio is it mainly what is it mainly comprised of uh yeah so my portfolio is mainly comprised of more single family homes uh it was a mix between apartments and single family Mm -hmm. um however because of the laws that regulations and all that changes um i had to shut down a few of the apartments and, uh, you know, but I never really had to shut down any single family home. So I was like, why don't I just stick with single family? Uh, and plus, you know, when you look at a company, when they have four employees or a, a family insurance is my favorite. Again, they, they want a, a homey feeling. They don't want to be mm-hmm. in a, you know, apartment complex. Yeah. hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. So I don't know anything about it and construction. I probably had one, uh client had stayed that was construction but it wasn't like re- repeater kind of targeted what's the approach from that if you don't mind giving us obviously i know you have a mastermind so we can obviously yeah. i would encourage everyone to tap into anybody who's kind of done the work already that's what i do i pay for access that's how i got into insurance shout out to my partner rachel Gainsbury, right dr rachel Gainsbury. like i paid to get access to get information i implemented it it worked i got high results so I would a encourage everyone to, to check out your your what you have to offer in your your mastermind group, et cetera. But if you're gonna just tease us a little bit or give us give us a little bit of game, Dr. Chow. Yeah, sure. what, what from IT and construction, like where do you find them? I know it's kind of like the million dollar question. And uh, you know, where what are they looking for? Are they looking for multiple rooms with smart locks on them? Are they, you know, are you designing your 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 properties or or I should say you're making them functional in a very specific way. Is it still the four threes or is it still some of the two threes or you're like, what kind of asset class do those IT and construction companies want? Is it similar to, uh, to insurance? Uh, yes, kind of, kind of similar. Um, so yeah, you do want to have like the, the whole idea is to help them have a good night's sleep basically, you know? So, uh, you know, have all the, all the blinders, on um and then the noise reduction boxes as well fan and that would help and also a, a grill the, the construction guys love grill grilling so those little things would help right um the way that you get these clients is the main person you want to contact is the human resource department mm-hmm. of all these companies so if you can just contact these people uh and then build that relationship in your local area then they get to know, like, and trust you. And then, you know, you can get the clients that way when they have something coming in. Um, So, so yeah, I mean, and then single family home is definitely good as well. Right. Do you need locks on all the doors and stuff? Or like, what do you need to make it functional for them? No, you don't really need locks on the door because they, they, these are a a team, right? They're in the same company. So, so, and, and, and what I like about them is just, a bunch of guys that you know guys are pretty easy to to manage uh, from my experience anyway right 
Yeah. So they, they they just they just want to go work, go home, sleep, and that's it. Mm. <clears throat> and I know I had a few like we had one stay in a in a five bedroom home. Um, is it you have a again? I'm I'm kind of beating over this, but a three three bedroom, four bedroom. Is there any sweet spot that you found that works? Yeah, four, four bedroom, two and a half bath. That's awesome. Experiment Nation, I have a special gift for you. If you're in the Airbnb space or if you're thinking of getting into the Airbnb space, you're an operator with multiple units, your first unit, your hundredth unit, just about to get into Airbnb, you are going to want to get this blueprint that I put together for you. Now, I want to give context of how this was put together because sometimes people assemble these uh, ideas and top 10 lists, top five, top this, and it doesn't have any true valued vetted content. What I've done is I've surrounded myself by the best top short-term rental Airbnb operators in the world. I co-authored a best-selling book with them called Hospitable Host. I've had them on my platform and interviewed them to get the questions that you guys want to learn the most from into the episode to show the real estate experiment, as you know. And I've also paid tens and thousands of dollars to be sitting in the room to get these notable insights that we implement ourselves as short-term rental operators. I'm a short-term rental specialist. I'm licensed to do it in their respective markets you know we build ours in georgia we have a management company ourselves we're airbnb super hosts so we not only talk the talk but we walk the walk but we still consistently surround ourselves with the best in the space to get us further ahead and this is what we've put together an airbnb millionaire blueprint where you don't just hear it from me you hear it and it's an aggregate list it's 21 pillars from short-term rental operators worldwide who've implemented this and it's worked and this is the exact same way we've been able to get results and get the same results from implementing these insights that i've pulled from multiple faces right some people have tons of arbitrage units like tj tajani some like bill faith have just a few some like michael shogan has boutique hotels they've scaled and whether you have one unit 10 units or 100 unit or about to get into your first unit you're going to want to have this blueprint that you can utilize you universally wherever you are in the world we want to get this i put together we took a lot of time to put this together this year after all that we've been implementing in our lab for you to have a guide that you can leverage right that you can use and and, and implement we've also given and tagged everybody that we've featured in and giving them credit so you know where the source is coming from and you can check out their instagram you can see that there are vetted individuals that we not only work with and trust but learn from because sometimes you get a lot of different information and i want to make sure i give that credit where you can find out that person and we've also if they've been on our show we've also linked the episode within this free blueprint it's the airbnb millionaire blueprint you want to make sure you go to experiment realestate.com once you get there you'll see the pop-up that says i have something for you just scroll down enter your name enter your email and we'll get it right sent to you don't want to sleep on this we've been putting these together for quite some time and i know that it will serve you regardless of where you are in your journey to have an airbnb millionaire blueprint that has been collectively vetted and has been sourced from operators who are operating at a high scale experimentation you're welcome make sure to go to experimentrealestate.com and get your airbnb millionaire blueprint so that you can also scale to the level of experiment that these practitioners like ourselves have done just for you experimentation we'll see you on the other side yeah. and and i can't stress this enough like just to echo what you said we're at the conference, I believe, like, and, I, and I'd love to hear what your thoughts are on this, because, you know, you have the, the building a list, marketing back. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we talk about building lists, right? I see you got yeah. the two comma club award. Shout out to you for that. That's a very respectable uh, achievement. Uh, so great. Good for you for, for doing that. And, and for those who don't know what Two Comma Club is, I want to give Dr. Chow BNB a shout out. It's a, you need to have, um, from what I understand, it grows to a million, right? From, from, from a specific offer or product. Uh, so that's uh, no small feat. And I see you got a, you got a few there. So, um, but going back to list building, because obviously we know this in the space is a big, I believe, and I would love to hear what your take is on this, that we're actually building two asset classes in, in, in one business, right? One is the book of business, 
similar to a financial advisor. Uh, and then, you know, and, and, and financial advisors sell their book of business, right? So that's a sellable asset. And then the other one is the actual, the actual, the actual real estate, if you choose to own it as well. Right. But, but for you, either way, it's a cash flowing business and you have a book of business as well. Do you see it that way? Do you see it differently? Uh, when you think about the MTR space, cause you did mention it was about the relationships, but I'd love to hear it from you. Uh, yes. So the, in the, uh, MTR space, the midterm rental space, yes, it's definitely a uh, relationship oriented. And, uh, the more that you in the game, the longer you in the game, the more, you, you know, the more connection contacts that you have, right. The better. Mm-hmm. Um, and I mean, I have insurance people that I know that I've been doing business with for years. Uh, and, and they, I'm one of the first one, they call me first when they have a family in, in the area. Right. Um, the other thing is you want to tap into a network. So that's why I build my own network is the um, beyond CHN network. So you can go to beyond CHN.com is beyond corporate housing network.com. Mm-hmm. And you can see our website. Uh, and then we have, we listen on all our partners that are my mentees and all that on the website. So that's why, you know, when you do the pitch with the landlord, you'd be like, you know, we we done this nationwide. We have hundreds of students, but I mean, hundreds of, of clients who have done hundreds of properties. You know, I don't know if I'm allowed to share my screen, but if I can, I, I would love oh, to. Yeah, no, absolutely. And it's funny. I was actually just pulling it up as we were speaking. So yeah. now you are. You've been granted access, my friend. And that's, okay. and that's also while you're pulling that up for those who are driving. I was just went to the site and what you see is a nice user interface that says bringing you home away from home beyond corporate housing network. And it's, I got to say, it's very impressive what you've done here because it shows the partners, right. The, 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 who you've worked with Mm -hmm. and then don't let me give it away. Do you also have the listings as well? Uh, No, not, not the sources, but these are, these are what you use to get the get the landlords to give them your properties, right? Oh, okay. So so uh, that's why my my students get all the properties they ever wanted because you know they just show them this man and they give them the the, the pitch which which I will, I'm allowed to share you the pitch uh, right now actually but this is leverage so the power of the network is in the network right so most people will just say hey can I Airbnb your property. Can I uh, do this and that? I watch some guys on YouTube. They're going to ask, how many have you done? Uh, you don't want to lie. It's just like, oh, it's my first one or my second one or whatever, right? Mm-hmm. We need more powerful. That's why they don't get it, right? So so we need more powerful if you come to landlord like this. Mr. Landlord, I love your property. We are a corporate housing provider. We've done hundreds of properties nationwide. We have hundreds of partners nationwide as well. So if you're probably qualified for what we do, one, we're going to pay for cleaning every few uh, every few months, professional cleaning. Secondly, any maintenance under $200, we're going to pay for it. We're not even going to call you middle of the night, basically managing it for you for free. Number three, we can do a three years lease as well. And then lastly, if they say no to all the above, you can give them, I can even pay you above market rent. Let me ask you this, Mr. Landlord, has anybody offered you all these things when they come and rent your property? Yeah, absolutely not. Of course, it's a no brainer, right? And then you show them, you know, the website that we have and, and all these people from all the way from Georgia, Utah, California, Texas, you know, wherever, right? Wherever we, we're all over New York, New North Carolina, right? Vegas. You see, so so we are nationwide. And, and and when we come together, we are so much stronger, right? I mean, when you go to war, when you do you want to go to war by yourself or with an army? Yeah, with an army. Yeah, yeah. People go to war by themselves all the time. Huh? It doesn't make sense for me. Yeah. And so, just so I'm clear, because this is such a great leverage. I I love leveraging. Like like I love that what you're doing. Yeah. Um. Is this so? Is it if someone in your network lands mm-hmm. a deal with one of these, it goes up on here, and and as a collective, you can say that we're all part of this network, and therefore we've also done business with these people. Is that how it works? Yes. So, uh, of course, that within a community, if you have a lead that you cannot handle because you only have got so many properties, you can share that with other people in the community and maybe you can split that. Or if, if it's in an hour of state, whatever. Right. So we, we always yeah, we always share that as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Awesome. 
and it's so interesting because you know we're we we're kind of talking about this offline. I don't know if you were aware, but we we're kind of building our own uh um a network, but it was more uh internally for to to share inventory and to you know when these companies come to us and you know you need to ask them something. What have you found is the best approach? Is it do you guys have uh insurance companies construction plugged into the network or is it more just kind of a user interface kind of like hey this is kind of our marketing thing like when you think of your network is it just more land landlord um or or i should say property management driven or do you also plug in some of these uh uh external connections like it construction into your network yeah absolutely so yeah, of course. I give them all my connections that I built over the past eight years. That's why my students get so much fast result within months without any experience, no prior experience or business. I mean, even like truck driver making six figure income, right? Yeah. So, so yeah. So I just plug them in, and then they get the they get the bookings. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, that's that's so interesting. And then uh, you kind of leave it to the community to share amongst themselves how they want to split or or is that kind of a structure that you yeah. you've built in no there's no there's no structure I, I don't get any kickbacks from that i'm just you know want to help all my students yeah. all my the community grow uh and then you know it's definitely a focus on a giving attitude in the community as well so um you know you know give a you you live to give right yeah, so probably. if we can share with, with between each other help each other out you know then we grow uh, strong together as a whole network right so yeah, yeah. good for you man that that's that amazing so going back uh you know and zooming out for a second like uh when you think of um you know our current environment right now and and you talked about you know signing up a three three year lease etc what is it that you're looking for from a numbers perspective for for someone because i think sometimes there's a lot of even on either side, whether you're buying a home, there's there's like analysis paralysis. If you're running the numbers, you know, analysis paralysis. What is your napkin math that is your go-to blueprint yeah. of like, hey, listen, this is, if I look at this, I've been analyzing these deals for a while. This one should make sense because blank. What are some of those things that you look up for? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so so I call it, so my method is, is F-A-S-T, FAST. Mm-hmm. Super easy to remember. First, you find the right property. Mm-hmm. A is to ask to sublet. S is set up to stand out. And T is to tap into corporate clients. Okay. So the F, we find the right location. How do you know if it's a good deal or bad deal? Well, for me, I'll give you a, a secret. It's called the three H's rule. It's called highways, hospitals, and hotels. Mm-hmm. Right? Three H's. Easy to remember. So when two highways intersect, like 10x, you know, yeah. <laughs> that's where all the traffic flow, that's where all the attention flow, right? So when two highway intersect, the government already invested billions of dollars into building them. So they know exactly where the traffic gonna go. They control the traffic. We wanna go with the traffic, right? Mm. And then when when the two highway intersect, there's four piece of pie. For whatever reason, the hotels and the hospitals will congregate in one or two of the side of, of those four piece of pie, you know? So you want, don't want to be on the wrong side of the track, right? Yeah. <laughs> so basically, just follow them. They drop a hundred to a billion dollars into a project. You know, they already done millions of dollars of research, right? We don't need to do any more research. That's the shortcut to the shortcut and get that fast. Mm. So you want to be within about five to ten minutes from these hospitals, hotels, and two major highways, and, you, and you're gonna get, you know. Pretty good chance it's going to be an, a, a great deal. Now, for the formula on how you much you should charge, you should charge double the market rent, give or take, plus or minus utilities, depending on the seasons, depending on the flow <laughs> as well. So And so charge we- to the companies, right? Sorry, just so yes. we're clear for the audience. Yes, to the companies. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, got it. Yeah, so I mean, so so that's so that's how you can make. For example, let's say you rent a home for like twenty five hundred, you would charge a company five thousand plus, maybe five hundred bucks for the, the the utilities as well. You know, uh, plus or minus. Sometimes if, if it's slower season or, or you have more vacancy, you can give them a discount, whatever. But that's how you can make around two thousand dollars per month per property. Is a good is a good average to look at. If you're in California or New York, you can 
make like four thousand a month, right? Mm-hmm. But you, I'm talking about regular like Texas or whatever, you know. So around two to three thousand a month. That's how you can get to ten k very fast because you can just do five of these and you make ten k mm-hmm. minimum, right? And then if you do just two a month, you can get there in two and a half months, right? Right. Without a lot of money either, you can you can borrow this money too, or you can even rent the furniture. You don't even have to buy the furniture. What so, do you, what do you advise? Good. Actually, that's a good call out. What do you advise? Do you advise someone? Again, everyone's situation is different. Yeah. So I'm not saying Dr. Chow said to do this, so I'm only going to do this. But I'm saying, what what have you seen as a good leverage tool that maybe we're not even thinking of? Is like, hey, let me get that zero percent APY credit card, buy yeah. all the furniture on there, or there's this vendor out there that we don't know of that. You can actually rent from you mentioned. Have you which one of yeah works? The yeah, best? so so depending on where you are, if, if you have like let's say a hundred k or more, I I would buy the furniture because because your ROI is definitely better with buying the furniture. Especially you can buy some that are um, in clearance or on a marketplace somewhere. Um, now if you if you don't have a lot of money uh, and don't have a lot of credit, then yeah, definitely rent. Right, so that's how you can do it fast. Uh, so it just depends on where you are at. Mm-hmm. I didn't even know that, that that was common. And when you say rent, is that typically uh, like a, 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 is there a known company or is this, you got to look locally? Yeah, there's, there are some major companies that you guys can probably search for. Um, we do have our own partners as well that uh, are doing well for it. Um, or you can search for some local companies as well and, and just, just find out what, what's the, you know, what, what's the good prices around there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, that's that's amazing. All right, so that that's uh that's that's really good, man. I I really um, you know, really um, it's such a phenomenal space in the fact that people are able to get in. Do you find that um the construction and IT companies are paying per head or per diem or how does that work? <clears throat> yeah. So so yeah, they do. They do have a per head. That's why you know four bedroom is better than two bedroom or three bedroom. Right or five yeah. bedroom is better. So yeah. so so that's why you know on average you you know they it depends on where you're at. But yeah, on average for a four bedroom we can get like at least five hundred to a thousand bucks more than a three bedroom, for example. So yeah, that's awesome. Do you have a uh, now? Let me let me. I know you mentioned insurance is your bait, uh, your favorite. Um yeah. And and so I definitely want to, uh, you know, uh give give the audience an ideas to to why why that might be you've obviously kind of highlighted that you know you can really bring in double and you can net take home that without owning an asset um and what does the insurance play look like just because i want to give a plug to the insurance company uh a play because I, I think it's an unbelievable niche uh and you know when when you see it in your eyes you know what what are the kind of the margin that that folks that you're yeah. seeing in the in the insurance space that make it like very appealing to you <clears throat> yeah absolutely so insurance um yeah you, you can do about two two times the rent plus utilities uh sometimes even, even more in the in a hot season let's say if you have a big hurricane in your area right mm-hmm. uh and insurance is ringing off the hook or like we have a snowstorm in dallas and insurance is ringing off the hook you know then the supply and demand basically you're not charging the family, you're charging the insurance company. Remember that. Yeah. Uh, these guys are worth billions of dollars. They got so much more money, they don't even know what to do with. And the policies uh, for insurance, they will cover about up to 10% of the value of the home. So it could be, uh, be up to like 100,000, 200,000, depending on the size of the home, right? Yeah. And they're never going to use that kind of money with the uh, housing anyway. So uh, keep that in mind. And uh, whoever give out the first number loses. So remember that. A big, big secret. Always ask them what what is your uh, uh, range of pricing. Always ask for a range, right? <laughs> so so they give you a range, and then then and then you know what they're looking for, right? And then then uh, you know, of course, with with the supply demand, well, also with insurance, you can charge other fees as well, like application fees, uh, monthly pet rent, um, you know, whatever extra cleaning, whatever it is. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, hundred percent. That's such a good reminder too about the price thing, man. Because I've seen it go so many different ways, different 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 situation. Uh, it's just crazy. 
Uh, and I think that there's no limit when it comes to that. So that's why I love it too. But at the end of the day, you're serving, you're 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 solving a problem. And that's what an entrepreneur is uh, is all about. Uh, last but not least, what is your your take on you know you get a lot of rental arbitrage. Like I had TJ Tajani on my platform. He's amazing. Shout out to TJ. He does rental arbitrage and at scale, and he also uses that to invest. What do you what do you what is your take on you know investing in real estate? Do you still see it as uh, a good vehicle and then when you do see it as that vehicle to invest in what kind of asset classes do you like to uh invest in is it more of do you actually invest in some of the ones that you're uh, rental arbitraging or yeah, are you just kind of staying lean yeah what is what is that yeah no of course i i i own quite a few homes myself yeah. um i love owning homes i love real estate uh it's, it's the way to generate you know generational wealth yeah uh, however, if you do not get the financial freedom, I want everybody to get at least 10 to 20K almost passive income from this mm -hmm. and get your freedom. And then you can buy as many as you want, right? Because it doesn't matter how many you own, uh, you know, it doesn't matter how much freedom you have, right? Mm -hmm. So, so I mean, I love multifamily. Don't get me wrong all that. But I have so many friends that invested, you know, uh, 600 to a, a million dollars and they're only making like two, 3K. Well, that's not going to do anything for their life. And it took them like 20 years to save up $600,000. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So instead, I just show that that's one of my students, uh, you know, COVID uh, employee for 20 years. And I was like, child, how do I do this? So I like, I showed him how it was to do. Boom, within a few months, now she's making like 10K a month. And now she doesn't even have to work if she doesn't want it, you know? Yeah. Uh, so yeah, to do that for you and your family first, for your insanity first. And then buy just because you want to build something longer term. So to answer your question, I do like single family home. I do like multifamily as well. Uh, whatever makes sense. Whatever. I always focus on cash flow. Cash flow is king, guys. Cash flow. It's all about the cash flow. So how much can that cash flow bring into you? Uh, how creative you are in doing that. You can do lease options. You can do creative financing. Uh, you can do multifamily if you are if you're in with us a multifamily. We do have some multifamily partners as well. Um, so yeah, I mean, I love, I just love the residential multifamily space. Mm -hmm. Love that, love that. It's a breath of fresh air hearing it from different, and that's the whole point of of bringing Dr. Chow, you know, B and B in the lab with us is to kind of show you a different lens, right? You know, there's multifamily guys and gals. There's SDR. There's MTR, and what I like more is you 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 created a business to fit the lifestyle that you wanted to have. And you're one high cash flow. You're not necessarily, I didn't hear necessarily appreciation, although that's nice and the icing on the cake and people talk about it. Great. Your focus is how do I maximize the amount of cash I can have that can happen passively in the business that can then give me the lifestyle that I want. And man, I gotta say, I saw you in person, man. You live in that life. So it's 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 a it's a it's nice to see very refreshing. Let me ask you, man, you got a lot of stuff going on. You know, I see you're you're doing your thing with your group, your network, social media. Uh, you, you have a strong brand. You have a proof of concept. What's next for Dr. Chow, man? Like, is it double down on what's working? Is there a, a goal out there you want to put out here into the lab so we can say, hey, Dr. Chow came in here. He said he would do it and he did. What is it yeah. that you want to put out here into this universe? So the Yeah, universe I appreciate it, guys. Yeah, so my mission is to help 1 million families get financial freedom by 2027. And in my lifetime, I want to have a, a billion followers. Um, so, yes, I, and I don't just want to do this strategy. Of course, this is one of the strategy that is one of the best strategy I have found. Uh, however, I am branching out in other ways, like creative financing uh, with real estate lease option and all of that. I have partners in those that you can actually now you know, going to own the home while you're going to make money from cash, cash cow it, right? So it's a win, win, win. And of course, like uh, my multifamily partners as well. So now it's a great marriage. It's a win, win, win for everybody as well. So I definitely branching out in, in other areas. I want to create a, a hub of, of uh, great entrepreneurs, great minds, and that we can help you grow um, your wealth, your health, mental freedom, everything. I'm all about freedom. My number one word is freedom. Not just money freedom, but time freedom, relationship freedom, location freedom, right? And I want to have my lifestyle be like that, which I am living, been living it for the last few years. You know, I'm very grateful 
I uh, come from nothing. And now I'm basically playing poker with Grant Cardone one moment. The other moment I'm flying to Tony Robbins' home, skiing with him. And then, some, you know, one time I, I found myself in front of Sir Richard Branson playing chess with him at his home in Necker Island. So it is, it's, it's phenomenal life. And I want everybody to experience that because I truly believe that we are all sons and daughters of God and we are royalty, we are noble. Uh, we have abundance already inside of us. And all we got to do is just discover our own superpower and then let it shine and let and help a lot of people along the way with it. That's beautiful, man. And I know you're going to go far because of that. And you're going to have a lot of people that, again, salute to you, will be following your way. Hey, you, you mentioned a lot of people. I'm going to let you drop, man. This was uh, amazing. But I want to ask you this question that I think, you know, because you're a guy with a mindset and you can tell that that's true, true to your core values, you know. What what do you think is um you know the best advice um that you received on the other end right you you've been with some pretty mm-hmm. notable people or the biggest kind of uh, a blind spot uh, moment or comment that you've ever received um from from those mentors yeah absolutely so I always ask them what are the key success right mm-hmm. uh for Grand Cardone is number one commit first. Number two, do whatever it takes and figure it out later, right? Uh, For Tony Robbins, it's uh, physiology, your focus, and your story. The story you tell yourself, right? Mm. For Sir Richard Branson, it's just take action. Do it immediately. Solve a problem. If you see a problem, solve it, right? Uh, And then always look at the downside risks. Always mitigate your risks. All these people. Some common theme is like asymmetrical risk-to-reward ratio, so you want to have, when you risk one, you want to win at least five or 10. Mm. With this business, MTR, arbitrage space, you're risking one, making 20 times. <laughs> so it's ridiculous. Um, and the other thing is massive action. is a cure all. Proximity is power. And relationship is is the key. So number one, invest in yourself. That's the biggest, best investment ever. Number two is invest in other people, other relationship. Number three, invest in business, your business. Number four, then invest in real estate for passive income mm-hmm. in that order. Very important. And yeah. Wow. So, I mean, uh, I know our time is up. You you can find me at Dr. Chow BNB, D R C H A U B N B, on Instagram or uh, Facebook, TikTok, whatever. You can also go to my website at beyondbnbsecrets.com, beyondbnbsecrets.com, and then lock in, uh, book a call with our team. And see if we, if we can work with us. We would love to work with you if you are qualified. You know, we're looking for three things. Being coachable, have a great attitude, and you're a giver. Then we love to spend, you know, I, I I'll give an hour of my advisor time worth a thousand bucks an hour to you to really game plan, map out, customize a strategy for you so you can get financial freedom within three to six months, not three to six years. Thank you so much, Dr. Um, Dr. Chow, man. I mean, look. Dr. Chow BNB came in here, delivered some some wisdom, and uh, I'm grateful for your time, man. And this was really good. And and you not only just stopped at your wisdom, you also gave us some in your journey that you've been able to accumulate. So, guys, tune in. You do not want to miss out. You're as good as the tools that you invest in to then get to the dreams that you want to get to. And again, thank you, Dr. Chow BNB, for coming to the lab for doing that. Sure. Man. Can I end with one quick story? So Absolutely. I want to. Close the loop. So my mom had cancer. Right? What do I do? What do I do? So with this business, I'm now want to let you guys know that she's 12 year cancer survivor. And uh, wow. you are listening to this. Yes, it's Mother's Day weekend. This weekend, I'm super happy because of this business. I'm able to take care of her every single week. She lived with me. Uh, I hire her, help her, and all of that because of this business, guys. So picture a day when I took her to her favorite, you know, beautiful vacation overlooking the water the beach resort, right? We have an amazing time with her, with my dad. Um, so picture that day in your mind right now. Close your eyes, you know, you can. And picture that day for you. What, what would that be like? So she looked at me straight in the eyes and said, son, thank you so much. With tears in her eyes, right? Thank you so much for taking that leap of faith. Even though I was the one that trying to hold you back uh, of doing this business. But you took that leap of faith. You made it happen. And now we're living a life of our dream for the past few years. I don't have to worry about anything. We're living in, a, in our dream home. Wow. And just want to borrow my heart, your time, me, my, my, my lovely husband. Thank you so much. I love you so much. 
So I want to share that to for you to hold that vivid vision, vivid dream for what for your loved one. No matter what, you're willing to fight for your freedom. Are you willing to die for your loved one's freedom? Right? I'm willing to do that. Hopefully, you're willing to do that too. So 10x your freedom, baby. Let's go. Drop the mic. And just like that, experiment nation, we are out. Experiment Nation podcasting has changed the way we operate as real estate investors ourselves, and it can do the same for you. Podcasting has been the source of the master classes that we get thanks to the world class real estate investors and practitioners and specialists that come into the lab from all realms, from short term rentals to mid term rentals to real estate syndications to even software as a service owners, founders, entrepreneurs have helped enrich our experiments by giving us the education, helping us build a network, and lastly, and most importantly, a brand association to open up multiple doors for our respective businesses. If you understand the power that podcasting can have, and you know that you need one for your brand, please, you can rely on our team. InvestedTalent.com is my team and the team that helps this podcast, The Real Estate Experiment, become the fruition each and every single week to educate my community, build relationships on the air, and continue to build our brand. If you know that you need to do the same for your brand and you haven't pulled the trigger yet, maybe because you don't know how, our company, InvestedTalent.com, does the end-to-end from the time that you record to the time that it is published to even repurposing content on multiple social media platforms. That's what my team can do for you. Simply go to InvestedTalent.com and book a discovery call to see how my team can help you launch your podcast.